Hey everybody, my name is John Nicole, and I'm here to talk to you about food science. This is going to be a vlog involving a little bit of science, but mostly about food. It's uh, going to focus on some questions that I come across when I'm dabbling in my laboratory slash kitchen, which I'm standing in today. There's always been a portion of cooking that I've found very similar to science. I'm a biologist and I dabble in chemistry also, so I would say baking is about as close as you can get to chemistry without mixing all sorts of crazy stuff. And it is actually sort of crazy when you think about it anyway. So let's get into today's topic. I was recently baking a batch of chocolate chip cookies and I accidentally replaced my baking soda with baking powder. And I was curious as to whether that would change the formula too much. And they ended up coming out extremely fluffy. I personally enjoy a flat and chewy cookie, so I did find that it didn't change the taste at all, but it did affect the, we'll call it the architecture of the cookie. So I went to my Google machine and I started looking up a couple of references and here's what I found. I thought you would find it interesting. So we'll start first with baking soda since you might be a little more familiar with it. Uh, as you might recall from your childhood, I'm sure everybody did this, I know I did it both for school and just in my spare time, uh, making your own little volcano using baking soda and vinegar. Basically the reaction that's happening there is releasing a bunch of carbon dioxide and that's exactly what you're looking for when you're baking. And that's the whole purpose of using it as an ingredient. Both baking soda and baking powder are considered leavening agents, and it's because of this uh, reaction that releases carbon dioxide that we can call it that. The one main difference, however, is that baking soda requires an acid to activate, which is why the vinegar produced all that gas. So when you're baking, if you'll notice, sometimes it calls for a very minimal amount of either lemon juice or maybe some buttermilk as opposed to regular milk, and that's because these, these liquids are acidic. And in fact, if you use cocoa powder and a little bit of water, that is also acidic. And that's what activates the baking soda. And that's how you get the nice little tiny bubbles that kind of make your pastry or whatever it is that you're making rise a little bit. Baking powder, on the other hand, is almost exactly like baking soda in that it's sodium bicarbonate, but it also contains a little, uh, we'll call it an activating ingredient, which is acidic in nature. It's basically its own little package. It comes self-contained and it'll do its work without adding anything else. Now, the most ver common variety of baking powder found is called double acting. And what that means is it'll both start activating once you add a little bit of liquid to it, regardless of what it is. It doesn't have to be acidic in nature, it can just be straight water. And then later on in the baking process, the heat will also cause it to produce carbon dioxide. So you get a double, kind of a double effect there. And that's why my cookies came out so cake-like and just puffed up to these big, almost muffinish type things. So I hope you learned something today. I know I sure did. And I expect that my cookies should be coming out more regularly from now on. I'll be sure never to make that mistake again. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to leave a like down below. And as for future topics that I've thought of off the top of my head, clarified butter is always something that I've wondered about. And the Maillard reaction, which I've only briefly sort of looked into. That involves how your food browns when you're searing it, or baking it, or cooking it, basically. Gives it that nice golden color. So until next time, I'm John, the food scientist, and happy eating, everybody.